Hello everyone. In this part, let's discuss rule 1.10 that is redundant or otherwise undesirable terms. First of all, what is meant by redundant? Redundant means simply unwanted. So that is why here it is mentioned as stand by should not or need not stay. So these terms as given below are unwanted terms and they are not required to be stated in a standby, right? But in some cases, if the standby states any of these terms, then these terms will be having the following meanings as mentioned in this rule 1.10, right? And this is question area and you will get some direct questions from this part that is uh, 1.10 A, B and C. So listen carefully and from ISP associate earlier, we will get direct questions unlike UCP. So just remember what is the meaning of the terms if it is mentioned in the standby. A standby should not or need not state that it is unconditional or abstract. But if it does, then it signifies merely that payment under it is conditioned solely on presentation of specified document. Unconditional means what? It means unquestionable. So without any question, the payment under the standby is strictly based on the presentation of specified documents in the standby, which is the character, which is a documentary character of standby, right? Next one is a standby need not state that it is absolute, but if it does, it signifies merely that it is irrevocable. Absolute means what? Absolute means rigid. So the undertaking given by the standby is irrevocable. That is simply rigid. Next, a standby need not state that it is primary. But if it does, it signifies merely that it is the independent obligation of the issuer. Primary means what? Ultimate or paramount. So it is a paramount obligation of the issuer to honor the standby if the presentation is complying and this obligation is independent of anything else, right? We have seen this concept of independence in rule 1.06c. That is the nature of standby. That is again a basic nature of standby. Next one, a standby need not state that it is payable from the issuer's own funds. If it does, it signifies merely that payment under it does not depend on the availability of applicant funds and is made to satisfy the issuer's own independent obligation. This is also again defined in 1.06c. As we saw earlier, even if the issuer is unable to recover the funds from the applicant, he has to honor the demand under the standby. That is none of the concern of beneficiary. You will get questions like, what if a standby states unconditional or abstract in its text? Then we have to identify the correct answer from that given options. Likewise, they will give even what if a standby contains the term absolute or primary, whatever they may give. And these are all direct questions. You will definitely get a question from this area. Right? A standby need not state it is clean or payable on demand. But if it does, then it signifies merely that it is payable upon presentation of a written demand or other documents specified in the standby. We will see this concept in our upcoming uh, rules. Actually, in a standby, even if the standby not called for any documents, even then the beneficiary is requested to submit a demand. It can be in written or it can be in electronic form, whatever it may be. But even if the standby not called for any document, let's say the standby simply saying we will pay you upon demand. But if it is not listing any other required documents, then also the beneficiary has to submit a written demand. This is again a basic character of standby. So that's why here it is mentioned. It need not state it. If the standby states, then it signifies this concept, right? By now, you might be able to understand why all these terms are unwanted because these are all the basic characteristics of the standby. So what is the point in stating these terms again and again in the standby? There is no use. That is why all these terms are not required to be stated on the standby. But remember the meaning of all these terms and expect a question from this area without doubt. Next one is a standby should not use the term and slash or it is a basic English. And this is just a suggestion given by ISP that a standby should not use the term and slash or because it will create a confusion while interpreting the same because it can be interpreted as both or either of those two things. So it will create a confusion. So ISP is suggesting it's better to avoid such terms, right? Next one is again very important. C. The following terms have no single accepted meanings. And in this rule, there are two subsections shall be disregarded and shall be disregarded unless their context give them the meaning. For these terms that is callable, divisible, fractionable, indivisible and transmissible, it shall be simply disregarded. 
but these stamps that is assignable evergreen reinstate and revolving if mentioned in a standby then we have to disregard that terms if their meaning is not given in the standby just to make a comparison of this if words callable divisible fractionable indivisible and transmissible are stated in a standby then close your eyes and disregard that's it but if the terms assignable evergreen reinstate and revolving are given then we have to check whether the definition is given in the standby itself if defined then we have to follow that if not defined in that standby itself then we have to disregard these terms as well and be careful while dealing with questions from this area because this area is often confusing so try to by heart these two areas that is these stamps should be disregarded and these stamps should be disregarded if no meaning is given so by this let's end part 3 and remember this is one of the important part so try to remember whatever we learned in this part right in the next part we will discuss rule 1.11